you here with your daily weather update and your California wildfire update. Uh, so let's hop into it. This is the LA Fire Department main page. Uh, they have information on a lot of different things on here. This is the uh, information for the Getty Fire. 745 acres, 66% contained. Um, they got a pretty good, <clears throat> pretty good handle on this one. So they're not too worried about it. Um, so let's go on over to the other page here. Now this is the uh, this is the evacuation zone for Los Angeles, and you might be thinking there's nothing on the page. That is correct. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, looks like they've dropped all the evacuation warnings and watches and all that stuff <clears throat> around this area. Now, if you remember right. A lot of this area all the way down to the coast here was under a warning and watch um, for evacuations for the wildfire but everything seems to be in order down there they've lifted all the evacuation orders that I could tell uh, so good news there uh, here's Cade fire it's almost 78,000 acres but 68 percent contained easy fire 1900 acres almost 80 percent contained um, Maria fire zero percent contained that's the one that just started uh, See, I'm reading something here on my laptop. Um, so evacuations ordered for 7,500 people. Uh, 1,800 structures were within the evacuation area as the blaze threatened the community of Somis. I uh, hope I'm saying that right. Um, yeah, it looks like one structure's already been lost. I believe this started last night. Um... Yeah, because it says by 7 a.m. So the blaze started on the early morning hours, which really dangerous, um, really dangerous when that happens. We're going to look at it here in one second. In fact, here it is. So Maria incident. You can see all the different road closures and uh, <clears throat> whatnot. Now, if you live in this area, let me know. Uh, I love hearing from people that live in these type of areas, not because I'm like, oh, great, you're in trouble, but it's always good to get the real story of what's going on, you know? Uh, so I like hearing their stories and um, and whatnot. So if you live in this area, let me know. Um, so, yeah, you can see, I mean, it's, it's a lot going on here. Now, if you want to type your address in, you come up here, type your address in, and it'll take you right to it. Um, this looks like a lot of farmland in here. We've got a subdivision to the southeast here, it looks like. Yeah, some subdivisions, but a lot of farmland over in here. <clears throat> and then it looks like you got a little town here. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not real familiar with this area. Okay. All right, so it's in L.A. County. So here's Simi Valley. And this is Santa Paula. Uh, anyway, so there's the Maria incident. Looks like it's burning in a bit of a canyon here. Uh, and spreading up those hills and then going all over the place. So um, I'm really surprised. I haven't seen any live coverage on it right yet. So I'm kind of surprised, um, but big fire nonetheless. And, you know, as you see, this map constantly updates, uh, even while I'm talking here, it'll update. So it's going to have all the latest information for you. So if you live in this area, keep a real, real close eye out. Uh, again, this is Simi Valley. So, <clears throat> all right, let's hop on over to the, uh, the forecast here. Let's take a look at what's going to happen. Is California ever going to get any rain and this wildfire threat is going to go downhill? Sure hope so. Here's the little strong low moving off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got the high pressure over Idaho. So that's not going to help anything. As we go through on to tomorrow, you can see the high pressure moves off to the east a little bit. It's pretty quiet. The Great Lakes region gets a little bit of snow maybe. A low off the coast of the east coast. Some showers dropping down into Montana and Dakotas. Maybe some snow showers. You see a low coming up through Texas. It uh, doesn't really do much. See some rain showers, a little bit of snow behind this. Uh, this is for your Monday. Low develops up by the Great Lake region. 
and uh, heads off to the northeast. It doesn't do too much. Looks like some showers down into Florida. <clears throat> Keep going forward in time. It's pretty quiet throughout the country. Um, it is going to be cold in the upper parts. It looks like a little bit of a rainmaker and some Great Lakes snow. That was for Wednesday, early Wednesday. <clears throat> Excuse me. See through the uh, upper straits, straits, upper states, Montana, Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Great Lakes region. Uh, getting some snow. Looks like the front's trying to develop here. Get some rain back down, some heavier showers into Oklahoma and Texas. Snow up in the Great Lakes. This slowly starts to go off to the uh, east. This is on November 7th, Thursday, November 7th. And then I see a little shower activity, southern part of uh, Texas there. <clears throat> pretty quiet, pretty quiet. A uh, little bit of snow moving into Montana. That's a really tightly packed isobar, so that's going to be some intense wind up there in certain parts. Uh, still no rain in California. See some rain coming into Texas. And then uh, a low is coming into the west coast there. The coast of Oregon and Washington. Looks like it brings them some rain. This is November 10th. Uh, so we'll have to see how that works out. You see this sharp contrast here. Holy smokes. That's going to be some windy conditions there. Uh, still no rain down in California. And then we see... So why, let's watch this form. You see this low hanging out right here. It's going to connect with this moisture and this tropical moisture. And it's going to connect and it's going to form up. You see some ice there. So some sleet, freezing rain, something like that's going to happen up here, supposedly. This is way out in time. It's going to happen. Take it with a grain of salt. <clears throat> that's all I can say. But this is calling for some heavy, heavy ice into Oklahoma, parts of Texas. Um, still no rain in California. System moves off. This would be a really big ice storm. It showed this ice storm yesterday too, in a little bit different spot and not at this point in the run. And then just magically out of nowhere, this low behind starts kicking up some moisture out ahead of it. Here comes the rain onto the west coast. Nothing going into California. Big system off the east coast. I'm just looking at trends. Like I always say, you get this far out, uh, the accuracy of these models goes way, way down. Because now, so yesterday we were talking about November 11th, uh, somewhere in here, actually, sorry. Talking about seeing rain in California, now this run is showing no rain. So that's what I'm saying, when you look that far out in future, there's no guarantees, but you like to get an idea of the pattern. So here's your snowfall forecast. Very light showers, uh, some heavy stuff back in upstate New York, a very small part. See a little bit of snow across the northern states. Goes really quiet on Tuesday. Wednesday picks back up, an inch or two across some of the northern states it looks like. Uh, upper Great Lakes region, probably two, that's probably six inches in spots. Looks like they're thinking maybe a little bit of lake effect snow. Uh, then we get into <clears throat> next Friday. It's pretty quiet, other than up here in the New England states. Looking like a little clipper system there. Might give you some snow. Pretty quiet overall there. System drops down on, uh, this is next Sunday. Looks like uh, one to six inches in areas. Maybe a little bit heavier. Parts of Montana there. Drops down the middle part of the country. This is the low we saw shooting through. Remember we saw it with the big ice. So talking about some big snows too. Again, uh, you know you're talking way out in time. This is the other system we saw just kind of appear out of nowhere. Then we see it go off the east coast. That'd be a big snow producer. This be a big. St if this happened, this would be a big story. Be a huge snow and ice storm and a huge snowstorm. So. All right, last thing we're going to show you, as always, is your temps. Departure from average. If your temp is supposed to be 50 degrees and it's only 40, you'll be in the blue. If your temp is 50, supposed to be 50 degrees and it's 70, you're going to be in the red. 
So you can see cool in most of the central part of the country here. It's going to time, shunts off to the east. It remains warm and dry on the west coast. See the east coast is going to get that colder air. Get another reinforcing shot coming down here through the Dakotas. Gets shunted a little bit by the warmer air and then comes right back as the high pressure moves around. Uh, as we go forward in time a little bit, this is next Friday. You see the two-thirds of the country, maybe we could call it, is a little bit colder than average by the west. You are warmer than average. Let's move into the next Saturday. This is a week from tomorrow. It's kind of still flip-flop there. Big high out west, big low in the east. And then you see shot of Arctic air. So remember we were seeing all the wind you know, talking about the tightly packed isobars. Look at the sharp. I mean, this is the sharpest you probably ever see. Contrast the temperature in there. You're talking, it goes from, you know, 10 degrees under to 10 degrees over, something like that. It's crazy. And it moves down. Huh. Yeah. Warm and dry in California still, so no relief in sight. Uh, the only hope is that the Santa Ana's will, uh, you know, calm down. I know they have some, so we'll hope that continues. Again, this is WX Ninja. If you want to stay up on the latest, just hit subscribe, hit the bell icon. Uh, you'll be notified right away whenever I make a video, and uh, uh, you can be the first to see it. So take care, everyone. Stay safe out of there. We'll see you later.